talking on the tips and tricks in bank card repair and reemplissage. As we know, there is a bank card lesion in the front where there is labral detachment, sometimes with a small bony piece, and a hill sax lesion, which is a defect in the back of the humeral head, which is secondary to multiple compressions between the humeral head and the glenoid. Now, in this lecture, we will see tricks based on positioning, portals, preparation, and anchor placement to keep the surgery smooth. So, we will be seeing three things equipment position, patient position, and portal position. Ergonomics, as we know, is an interface between man and machine. And if the ergonomics is good, the surgery will be smooth. The monitor of the arthroscopy tower should be kept 10 to 15 degrees lower than the surgeon's eyes. And this is a comfort region for the surgeon. Otherwise, the surgeon will be straining his neck. Similarly, to perceive the vision better, uh, the distance of the monitor to the surgeon should be at least five times that of the diagonal of the monitor. Now, the elbow should be at right angles. So, the table height, especially in shoulder surgery, should come down so that the patient, the surgeon is at ease when he is operating. The important thing is the surgeon, the target area, which is the shoulder and the monitor should be in a coaxial line. And you can see the height of the monitor there which is around 10 to 15 degrees lower than the surgeon's eye level. So all these small things will improve the performance and prevent complications because surgeon is not fatigued and he can do a better surgery. If we are using pump for bank art and remplissage, please keep it on a higher level than that of the patient. Otherwise, the motor of the pump will have to pump that much more to bring it up. So it is up to the surgeon whether he uses a pump or not. We all know the difference between beach chair and lateral. I will not go into details. I am a purely lateral position based surgeon. So if you are using lateral position, the patient should tilt 15 degrees to the back. This will negate the retroversion of the glenoid and will make the glenoid parallel to the floor. So entering the shoulder joint and maintaining anatomical position will be easy. You can use, I have the luxury of operating in all these uh, devices. I sometimes use the uh, spider in uh, institutions. Sometimes I use my favorite, the three-point traction system, or sometimes I just use the IV stand. It really doesn't matter as long as you know how to move around the shoulder. Uh, traction is not very important. The arm has to be suspended. A quick video on how to uh, do this. So I always surface mark my shoulders because once there is fluid infiltration, the shoulder will bloat up. That is your supraspinatus notch. This is the anterior border of the clavicle. That is the anterior angle of the acromion, which is a very important landmark. And that is the posterior angle of the acromion, which is another very important landmark. And that is the spine of the scapula. Now the AC joint is in the front and the single most important landmark, the coracoid process is over there. The posterior viewing portal is usually two centimeters inferior and one centimeter medial to the posterior lateral aspect of the acromion. When you have remplissage, you go a little more lateral and when you have subacromial axis, you stay a little more superior. But the posterior portal for regular bank cards is here. The anterior portal should always done, be done with the outside in technique using a spinal needle and the safe zone for making the anterior portal is your rotator interval. The angle between your antero inferior and antero superior portals, the two anterior portals should be roughly around 30 degrees because you're going to view with your scope and instrument with your elevator through these two portals. And the ideal angle should be 30 degrees for effective visualization and instrumentation. These are your two anterior portals. I will first make the antero inferior portal very close to the subscap and very high in the triangle very high in the triangle because you have a good angle to make your anchors. You can see the angle in which the spinal needle is coming in and I can reach five o'clock easily with some distraction. I can reach the six o'clock easily and this is a very nice angle. Now, the second portal, the antero superior comes just behind the uh, biceps and it was initially uh, textbook wise, it has to be placed a little low, but I prefer to place it a little high like this because you get a bird's eye view of the glenoid and you should be able to go on either side of the biceps 
the way the spinal needle went. So a tip to do the bank art repair, this is viewing from posterior. Most of the cases in our Indian scenario, you will see a bald glenoid when you see from posterior, when you shift to anterior like this, you will see the uh, glenoid patient like this, which is a bad case, multiple dislocations, which looked like there was no labrum at all from posterior. With gentle dissection, you can actually see labrum and alpsa lesion stuck to the medial end of the glenoid. Even in worst of the scenarios, when you use a small elevator like this and gently go and dissect that region till you see the fibers of subscap, you can see recent, uh, decently good labral tissue down stuck in the medial side like the one that you're seeing. It is very important to not break the ring of this labrum. So you should be patient here and with good dissection all the way to six o'clock or even seven o'clock, you can get fairly decent amount of labrum and the, the labrum should nicely fall back into the glenoid for adequate tension-free repair. So how we improved thanks to two people who looked into two technical flaws. So the site of labral repair from the medial side of the glenoid had changed to face of glenoid for the anchors and addressing capsular laxity with capsular plication. So uh, Savoy brought the anchor placement to the face and this is where now we place our glenoid anchors. I like to place it in 530 from metal anchors to bio and peak anchors. Now most of us have moved to the all uh, suture anchors which are very small. All sizes available in the market are less than 2 millimeters. So you put an anchor, you can either put a double loaded or a single loaded. Take one limb through the posterior portal, viewing from the anterior portal using one of the favorite devices that you have, uh, you can take a bite through the capsular ligamentous structures in the IGHL. And usually the nitinol wire or the ethylon loop will pass towards the posterior portal and you shuttle it and you tie the knots. So tying the knots, there are anatomical studies that it can be placed anywhere, but I prefer the old good old teaching of placing the knots on the capsular side and not on the glenoid side, which will prevent cartilage damage. So usually now the procedure is standardized. We all use a sliding knot followed by three half inches and we change the post. And this is how your knot should look with a decent bumper effort if required. And with your first antro inferior knot, usually the humeral head should be centered over the glenoid. Remplissage found by the San Francisco genius Eugene Wolf literally means filling in. It is basically capsulotino disease of the posterior capsule and infraspinatus tendon to fill in the hill sacs defect. It is usually done for off track lesions, although most of us will have a consensus that we have started doing more and more of remplissage because it is a good procedure. So, viewing from the antro superior portal, a hill sacs lesion would look like this. And bringing a spinal needle through the accessory posterior portal, I will plan the place of capsulotino disease effect of the remplissage. So now when you internal rotate, you know exactly where you have to place the anchor. The anchor should be placed so that there is good, good approximation of the capsule and the infraspinatus like that. You bring in the elevator and as in any surgical repair, biology is very important. You roughen the heel sacs and remove the debris with the shaver. Be careful to not eat away the capsule. You can make one or two anchors from your accessory postulateral portals like this. This is the John Kenny's technique where you bring in a uh, knot pusher to one side and with a suture retriever, you work along the capsule without taking the glenoid and retrieve everything and make knots outside and have a full compression onto the hill sacs with the capsule and the infraspinatus. I like this technique because it can cover large areas and you don't make multiple punctures in the capsule. The other technique for smaller uh, hill sacs is this. You make an accessory portal, bring in your anchor, withdraw the cannula and with your arthropiers like instrument, you can take bites like this, retrieve them, four bites all around the point of anchorage. and tie the remplissage sutures after your bank art repair to have a capsulotino disease effect. 
like that. So this is an example of how much of labrum, uh, how much of capsule is being filled in along with the infraspentus. So you can see a big gap. Now, usually once you do a uh, remplissage after your bank card repair, this is how it look. There is actually no space in the posterior portal. That is where my uh, uh, switching stick is coming in. The head will be centered and there will be excellent absolute you know, this effect. And if done properly, there is actually no great loss of external rotation. Thank you.